Hey guys, it's Hink here. And so today, once again, guys, I'm a man off the people. And I put this post because I've seen a lot of comments about like, oh, Hink, can we get a video on anatomy? Hink, can we get a video on anatomy? And so that's exactly what we're going to do today. I posted a poll on my community section and the overwhelming majority you know, I'll have Callie put it up here, shows that you guys are actually interested in anatomy. If you guys like this video, please support it. But what we're going to be doing is breaking down penile anatomy in hopefully a simplistic way so you understand what it is and you understand the importance of different structures while you're doing PE. And hopefully maybe some of you guys can even use this information to build upon it when you guys are advancing the field of penile enlargement. All right, guys, so to start with basic anatomy on kind of either side of your penis, you have your two corpora, your corpora cavernosa, and they're filled with what we call these sinusoids or these like caverns of blood vessels. And what they do is they, the smooth muscle relaxes. And you can think of the smooth muscle as like, like a lid. Okay. When the lid relaxes, it allows the blood flow in and that's what actually causes an erection. Okay. So that's the importance of like, when you get stressed out and I'm like, you guys, if you think you have an injury, don't stress yourself out because you're sending the nerve fibers signals to stay tensed and when they stay tense they can't relax and when they can't relax you can't fill with blood and so that's how you can have erection issues with that on the underside of the penis and so we call it the ventral side meaning if you're standing up and you look down at your penis that's the dorsal side okay this side on the ventral side the underside there you have what we call the corpus spongiosum okay that is also a different chamber of the penis it connects actually to the glands the head of the penis it's all one section okay and it does not become as hard as the other corpora cavernosa. So your cavernosa on the side are hard. Underneath does not get as hard. Maybe about 70%, 70 to 80% as hard. So I made a video about like soft gland syndrome. And so a lot of guys that aren't aware don't know what their normal erection function is. Think they have an injury because the head of their penis or the underside of their penis is not engorging as much or filling up with blood as much as they think it should when really that's just their normal anatomy. So it's very important that you guys understand basic anatomy. Now, the main reason why the corpus spongiosum, the underside of your penis, does not get as hard is because you need it to not be as hard. That's how you're able to pass your urine. It's also how you're able to pass ejaculate when you ejaculate. If that was as taut or as tense as your corpora cavernosa, you wouldn't be able to pass that fluid out. Where the base of your penis, where your corpora cavernosa, where they attach themselves base back to the pubic bone is called the crura. And then on the underside, the ventral side, where your corpus spongiosum is, that actual base of that penis is called the penile bulb, okay? And it's very important when you're actually looking at penile anatomy from a prostate cancer perspective. And when you're looking at how those corpora cavernosa attach to the penis, they're actually attached, excuse me, to the pubic bones by essentially the suspensory ligament. That's why when people get enlargement surgery and they cut the suspensory ligament, it causes this artificial or this kind of fake lengthening of the penis. It just means your flaccid penis hangs lower, but you also don't have that stability. So you can lead to a lot of problems that way. That's why you should never get penile lengthening surgery where they just cut your suspensory ligament. The base of the corpora cavernosa are actually surrounded by the ischio cavernosus muscle, a very important muscle when it comes to pelvic floor health. And then the, the corpus spongiosum, the underside of your penis is actually surrounded by the bulbous spongiosus muscle. Okay. One of the reasons why that muscle is so important is because when you actually do have soft gland syndrome, that muscle stays in a contracted state. Because it stays in a contracted state, it doesn't allow blood flow into the underside of your penis. And so your corpora can inflate like normal, but the underside of your penis can be completely flat. Okay, and it doesn't engorge and your head of your penis doesn't engorge. Now, what I actually learned in making this video is that the, you, know, you have your two corpora cavernosa, but in between them, there's this fenestrated or there's like little holes in between them that actually allows blood flow to pass from one side of the penis to the other. Okay, I thought that that was pretty interesting. Now, there's often a lot of talk made about the tunica albuginea. You need to understand the different layers of the penis because it gets simplified with tunica albuginea, but it's much more complicated, okay? So there's really three fascial layers that actually surround the penile caverns, okay? Or the corpora. The innermost layer is the one that's actually the tunica albuginea. I do think that this one is the most important one. This one's what's responsible for actually penile rigidity. And I also think that this is the layer that's most responsible for preventing your gains, depending on how thick it is or depending on how reluctant it is to change. Going from inside out above the tunica albuginea is a middle bux fascia, okay? And then the most superficial is something that's called a dartos fascia. Then above the dartos fascia, you have the subepithelium and then you have the skin. Okay, so I mean, you can see the layers here. 
And guys, I know this isn't the sexiest video, but I literally took a lot of time to make this video because of something you asked for. I have a feeling it's probably not going to perform very well. So if you're watching this video, it would mean a lot to me if you just like this video and let me know that this video is worth my effort to make. And guys, interestingly enough, the actual fascia of the penis actually goes directly into the suspensory ligament. It's a thickening of that deep fascia that actually forms a suspensory ligament. So, you know, when, when Perv especially and also BD talk about like the importance of like fascial release, I mean, they actually have some uh, like a very credible leg to stand on. Obviously, they, I mean, you don't need me to tell you that, but there is a very strong fascial component to the actual penis. So when they talk about doing fascial release, you know, there's certainly some, some credibility to that. Not that there wasn't before, but I'm just saying it, it kind of makes more sense, hopefully, to you guys after watching this video. Another important uh, ligamentous structure is actually called the fundiform ligament. It actually, like, wraps around the penis, and it's, you know, partially responsible for keeping your flaccid and erect penis in place, but it actually doesn't have any kind of function when it comes to erection. And guys, I've talked about this before as well, but you have what we call your neurovascular bundle, your bundle of your nerve artery and vein that runs along the dorsal side of your penis. So once again, if this, you know, this is my erect pee pee right here. Some of you go, why do you say pee pee if you're a doctor? Because I freaking feel like it, guys. <laughs> Sorry if I can't be a hundred percent doctor all the time, but so you have your, your, your pee pee right here. Okay. Your penis. If you look down, that's the dorsal surface, your nerve artery and vein are running right along that going into the base of your penis here. And that's where that suspensory ligament is. And so Callie will put up a picture here, but I've often talked about how you have to be very careful that even guys who get that like penis lengthening surgery where they cut the suspensory ligament, oftentimes they actually cause nerve damage from that. Or you guys are doing like, you know, manual stretches straight down or hanging straight down and you strain that suspensory ligament, you could actually cause nerve damage and erectile dysfunction that way, sometimes even hard flaccid. It's one of the reasons, guys, why one of the main causes of hard flaccid is damage at the base of an erect penis, okay? Because that neurovascular bundle is right there, and because your penis is engorged, there's not as much give to those structures, and so they're more prone to injury. If you guys want to learn more about hard flaccid, guys, I have a whole course on hard flaccid. Link is in the description. Now, when you're actually talking about blood supply to the penis, the main arterial blood supply is from the internal pudendal arteries here. And I'll have Callie put up a picture here, but it branches out from the internal iliac arteries. Um, I would love to take you through the anatomy of the pelvic arteries because I find it absolutely fascinating, but I'm not because you guys aren't big nerds like I am. At least most of you guys are not. From this internal pudendal artery, you get the common penile artery, and then the common penile artery has three branches, the bulbourethral artery, the dorsal, you can see the bulbo urethra is on the underside of the penis that goes along the urethra, guys, bulbo urethral artery. Then you have your dorsal artery of the penis and the cavernosal artery as well, which I'll show to you guys on a, on a better picture coming up. And the cavernosal arteries, guys, which you can see here, they course through the center of each corpora cavernosa and they actually branch into different arteries that provide the different blood flow for the for those sinusoids those vessel like structures in the middle of your penis that actually once again the smooth muscle relaxes and it fills with blood those are the arteries that are actually responsible for that and you can see that pictured here now of course you can't talk about arteries without talking about veins and you know a lot of you guys may or may not know that when you get an erection it's because you have that increased blood flow and thus those sinusoids start to dilate and when those sinusoids start to dilate they actually put pressure on the venous drainage, the veins that drain the penis or take the blood away from it. And so as those areas fill up, they kind of clamp off the different veins. And so that's what traps the blood in the penis. And that's what leads to an actual erection. But the venous drainage of the penis, it's a little bit more variable, but it's primarily from the superficial and the dorsal veins of the penis, which are actually separated by Buck's fascia. And those penile veins actually drain into the internal pudendal veins. But if you were to do an MRI, believe it or not, the actual only well-visualized vein is actually the dorsal vein of the penis. And guys, you've actually heard me talk about the lymphatics of the penis as well. If you guys haven't seen it, you know, watch one of my other videos about the importance of the lymphatic drainage of the penis because I actually break down a paper where it actually shows an MRI image of the different lymphatics, but they branch up and around the penis in many different ways. Uh, but that's what actually is responsible for essentially fighting infections and draining some of that interstitial fluid that's actually in the penis. And those lymphatic channels actually drain back to the inguinal canal or to the actual groin of the penis. And, you know, one last fun fact that I want to kind of leave you guys with is, you know, we all start off as essentially females in utero. And guys, this is, I promise you, this is not the place for that, like, what is a woman debate or anything like that. So number one, if my use of man or woman offends you, like, 
please leave my channel. <laughs> but number two, guys, like I'm just talking about from a scientific perspective, okay? But that being said, so we all start out as essentially girls in utero, okay? And we all have ovaries up here. Then our ovaries descend through the inguinal canal through something that's called the processus vaginalis, which means like in vagina, just means like open vagina, a channel that goes down through our groins and actually deposits into the scrotum. And those that don't know, the actual like scrotum is the equivalent of the labia or the like the vaginal lips that, that just like fuse. And that's why if you look at your scrotum, you can see that like kind of line that runs down the middle. Yeah, guys, that's where that's from. And the actual clitoral structures in a woman actually enlarge and develop into the penile tissue. You believe it or not, you have the same anatomic structures. You have essentially the same glands. You have the same muscles, whether you're a man or a woman, okay? But that's why men get something that's called an inguinal hernia, okay? Oftentimes a sports hernia, because sometimes that processus vaginalis, that area in either of your groins, because it had to open up to allow your testicles to drop through it, sometimes it remains a little open. A little piece of your intestine can kind of go down from your, you know, your abdomen where it should be, especially with increased intrathoracic pressure, and go down into your testicles. And so, you know, maybe you've had a physical, then doctor turns you to tells you to turn your head and cough. They're doing that because they're trying to see when you cough. You increase your inner thoracic pressure, and if you do have a hernia, that hernia will come down. If you have your finger up in somebody's processus vaginalis, you can actually feel that hernia come down and actually touch your finger. Okay, so there you guys. Now you guys are sports medicine docs. But guys, that's going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually really enjoyed making this. So even if this bombs, I love making this video and I love learning about this stuff. Hopefully you do too. If you guys, you know, don't mind, please check out our supplements. All the links are in the description. They're great for things like PL health, blood flow, semen health, semen quality, even things like boosting your testosterone or preserving your nerve function or minimizing the risk of fibrosis. If you need to reach me, patreon.com slash if you need any kind of enlargement equipment, peakmalephysique.com. And of course, if you want to support Cali, all the links are in the description and the ways that you can do that. All right, guys, remember, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. All right, guys, peace and love. Dr. Hink got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah.